So for this week's post we're going to make a drawing of a room and I'm going to show you how to draw in perspective and how you can add your own furniture and colour um, as you go along. And this is inspired by the artwork of Stephen Newton in the Rugby Collection and you can find out more about it on our um, collection pages of the website. Now um, the artwork in the collection is called Drawing 22nd of the 7th 2001 and that's um, really the artist capturing that specific moment in time of what that room meant um, at that point. So the room that he was in or somebody else was in and looking at the ideas of isolation and there's nobody else in the room. It's just a, an, an open doorway and some furniture and really thinking about what the symbols of that means. Um, and I think that at this point in time, we're all spending a lot more time at home and we have been than we would have done previously. And just thinking about our surroundings and what they mean to us and um, representing that in a drawing. So you can use mine as inspiration um, or you can create um, your own. So look at the room around you and make something inspired by that. So we're going to start. Um, I'm going to take a slightly different perspective on my drawing. So I'm going to draw mine as though I'm looking directly into the room. And to do that, I'm going to find roughly the centre point of my art. So I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to draw a line. Um, I'm going to draw it fairly dark so you can see it, but when you do yours, make it light um, so it will be easier to rub out later down the line. Um, so the black line that I've drawn on here represents the edge of my page, if you like. So if you've got an A4 piece of paper, you don't need to draw the back line on yours. Um, just treat the edge of the page as the edge of your drawing. So I've drawn diagonal lines across, oh, across in the middle. This point here in the centre, I'm going to put a dot there, is my vanishing point. And that is the furthest point that I can see down the room. Now, everything that I'm going to draw from here is going to go towards that point. And you'll see what I mean as we go along. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in what will be the back and so I'm going to draw a horizontal line across the bottom of my picture and I'm going to start on this left hand side of the cross and finish on the right hand side. It doesn't matter too much where you put it, the further you put this line or the closer you put it to the vanishing point, the longer the room will look so it'll look more like a corridor. The further back this way you put it, um, it will look um, like a narrow door, so you're almost like staring straight at the wall or standing straight in front of it. So I'm going to put one line here and then I'm going to work my way around. Um, it's really important to make sure that your lines are straight. If you, if they're not, this um, it could start to look off um, and you'll notice it when you're drawing something like a broom. Okay, so you can see I've worked around, I've got three these here and then I'm going to join these across the top as well. So, so make sure they're level. Okay, so what I've got here is if I rub out okay, these cross lines, I'm going to leave the vanishing points, we'll need it a bit later on, but I'm just going to rub this out so you can see what I'm doing. This here is the back wall of my room. I'm then going to take my pencil and I'm going to draw back along these cross lines that I made. So I'm just going to do it so they meet up with the box. So I don't need the centre of it, just the edges. So meet that up there, make sure it goes into the corner. And do that for every angle. So hopefully you can see what we've got here. So you're looking into your room. So this area here, like I say, is the back wall. This is your floor, your ceiling, and your two side walls. And that's just a really basic entrance to a room. So the next thing to do is to start putting things in it. So just to help with this perspective um, and to think about what you're looking at, I'm going to put a window on this back wall and because it's on the back I just need to 
make sure that all my lines are level. So I'm going to do one here. Um, let's move that across a little bit. You can make it any size you like, as long as the horizontal lines are horizontal. So use the top of your page as a guide to help with that. I'm going to do quite a thin no, I think, and then the top one here. It doesn't matter if you go off slightly, we can put that one straight away. We can kind of adjust it as we go along. So, this here is going to be my window. So, I'm just going to let's just draw a bit of a tree there so you can remember that's what's going on outside. You don't have to do that, I'm just putting that for illustration purposes at the moment. So this is my window. Go across on here. So anything that goes on this back wall is flat. We're looking directly at it, therefore you need to make sure that the edges are vertical and the top and bottom are horizontal. If you do that, it will look correct. Anything that doesn't look if it looks slightly off, just kind of go along and straighten it up again and just sketch it out. Okay, so we've got our window here and then let's put another one on this side wall. So anything on this left wall, remember we had the vanishing point in the middle. So because this is on the left wall and the wall's sloping inwards, I need to make sure the window slopes the same. So I'm going to look at it. I'm um, going to decide, if, yeah, I want my window to finish. Um, look, so it feels like it's level with this back window. So I'm going to line my ruler up with my vanishing point and draw a line in here. And this is going to be the bottom of the window. You can see that because I've matched it with the vanishing point, I've got a natural angle on that. It's not straight, um, it's not horizontal, it's going on an angle. Okay. I need to decide on the height of my window, so maybe I will do the same. Let's decide how high we want it to go. If you're looking at your room um, and you're observing it, then you can have a look and see what you think that would be. Um, okay, so I'm going to take my top point here and I'm going to draw this again and make sure matches the vanishing point and then just make sure your vertical lines match up as well make sure they do go straight adjust them if they don't so i've matched the bottom line to the vanishing point and the top line to my vanishing point you see that window now feels like it's going in inwards the most common thing to do when you're starting drawing is accidentally drawing one of these lines horizontal and that means that your perspective looks wrong and you obviously can't work out what you've done but it's just as simple as adjusting that line and bringing it up or down a bit so anything on the left is going to the vanishing point here and the same with anything on the right so let's put a doorway in here so it matches um, the Newton artwork that I was talking about at the beginning so again with your doorways it's like I say it's on this side I just need to make sure the sides are vertical Think about how high it comes up. Does it feel like you can get through it? Um, that it's tall enough to get through? So you're probably going to want the height so that the line is sloping downwards. So again, match it, decide on your height, match it with your vanishing point, and then draw a vertical line down the other way as well. And that's your basic outline so you've got your door here i just as you can see this is your window you could have this as another window if you wanted to you can make it into anything you like really and um, it could be a picture on the wall um anything like that okay and then i'm just going to show you how to put in one piece of furniture so like the newton picture he's got a table or like a coffee table in his and I'm just going to point this out so that when you start putting furniture in your room, you have a think about it. Just 
think about how high the furniture comes up, up on this back wall here because it's really easy to draw something that fits in the space down here and actually that's where your floor is so remember it's got this height to it as well so if you want to put i don't know something like a coffee table in just really think about where does it start and where does it finish and here because it's we're looking at it straight on so i'm just imagining this is straight on that i'm just gonna draw it level it doesn't have to worry about the vanishing point for that bit let's see okay let's say this is your table but you see how i'm starting to come up above your vanishing above your floor line already so we could put a back in so again with the sides i'm just making sure they go to the vanishing point the further your table is to the left or to the right, the greater, say, one angle will be to the other. So it might not be exactly the same. It depends how far you've got it. And then let's just put some back legs in here. But you can observe your room. So just see, it's just really watching this top line to make sure it feels like it's, yeah, it's just looking at it and making sure it comes up at the wall level and it's not all sitting on the floor. If you want to do something like, you, I don't know, you've got floorboards, something like that. Um, these are really easy to put in. You just need to make lines that go to your vanishing point. And the best way to do is to space them out evenly. And so I'm just going to put little lines along here. There's reference points. Lefty, so I know where they go up to. And then work my way around. So each one I'm connecting with the vanishing point. And again, you'll see that the angles change as you go. Now you can just really fill this out now, um, start to add a sketch. So it's up to you whether you want to add colour to this, whether you, how much detail you want to do, like have a look at what's in your, your room. Um, things around your house that you might like to be inspired by. I said put a bit of a flower vase in here. Images of the painting. A bit of a flower vase. Okay, have another table even. Anything that's vertical you keep straight. Anything that's not, make sure you're thinking about your vanishing points. And where they go and think about how much of everything you'll see. So things like windows, remember they've got this thickness to them, so you might want to sketch around and put in thickness to the frame. Um, you might have curtains, anything like that that you want to put in. Skirting boards are also a good one, just to give a bit of depth to what you're you're doing. Um, these are really, if you want it to look kind of really neat and professional, if you like it sketching, you can kind of loose roughen up some of these edges a little bit. Okay. Let's see. And um, with the door, so I've left the door, I put this little handle on so that you can see where it was. I'm just going to put the door frame on here, make it look like it's got a bit of a thickness to it again. Think about which way your door's opening into the space. So mine's, now I put the door frame on, mine's very much going away. So I'm just gonna put, if I wanted it to be a jar, just make sure I put this line going so it looks like it's opening. And think about what's going on with the floor on this side here. What's the pattern on the door? Has it got a pattern on it? Anything like that, that you might just want to sketch in and put the door handle on the wrong side. You might not even see that. Okay, think about what you're what you can actually see. If you want to put a clock on the wall or anything like that, so anything that's not square, you can still think about putting it inside a box to help you sketch it out. So I'm just gonna draw a box. So I matched it up to the vanishing point again. Make sure it's uh, it's gonna fit above my door for example. And then just draw your circle, if it's a circular clock, so it reaches the edges of the 
box and then rub out the corners that you don't need. And basically that will mean that your clock is almost squashed in perspective if you like. If it's that's what you go. So there you go, that's your basic basic room how to draw that. Um, and then it's just down to adding colour. Okay, so as you can see here, I've started to add lots of colour to this. I'm just using um, oil pastels. So they're not the same as the wax crayons um, that Newton was using in his artwork, but they give that similar kind of almost childlike um, quality and there's something um, quite nice about working with them. You have to press down quite hard on the page to make a mark. Um, it feels like quite deliberate motion and you kind of get these scratches and if you've got anything underneath your paper you'll pick that up um, so just kind of go with that. Um, I've added a lot more colour to my artwork than his um, but I've used a basic similar colour palette with the pink and the um, like ochre browns and I've just added my own twist to it a little bit. Just remember when you're colouring in say like walls and things like that that you would get some light on there. So um, I might want to put a bit darker mark around the back of the wall here or lighter and um, with the light from the windows hitting it on this side and just uh, putting that in as well um, so it doesn't look too flat and adding a bit of interest to what you're doing. And yeah, you can see how hard I had to press down to do this. Just kind of a nice way of working. Um, so yeah, add a little bit more dark pink to this side. And you might even get a bit of a reflection of it. What I like to do is I like to add some of these other colours somewhere else in my work for whatever I'm doing so I don't end up with spots of pink or that, that stand out or something like that. Um, I've also got this clock here. So one of the characteristics of Newton's work, um, if you look back at it, is this really dark black line around the doorway areas and kind of get leading into this void. So I'm going to introduce some of that into this work um, by just putting some shadows and some highlight lines um, in with a black oil pastel. Normally um, when I'm drawing perspective drawing, if I wanted it to feel really realistic, um, I wouldn't introduce these black lines because it can flatten it back down again. But in this case we're trying to get more of a feeling and um, a mood in the room and I think introducing some of that darkness so it represents that original artwork is um, quite important. Kind of help define the edges of some of these um, items of furniture and that kind of thing. I'm just bringing out some highlights in that. You want, if you want to put any light on the ceiling or anything like that, then you just make sure you need to think about what direction it's going. So I've kind of got rid of my vanishing point now, but making sure that it still goes in 
into that so that it feels like it's kind of coming down from the ceiling into the space or rather than sitting on the back wall where it's in a kind of unnatural position. So just kind of think about that as you're putting that in.